Okay, welcome everybody to the second week of our Cognitive Psychology module and this week we will talk about perception and again the videos will be split. Uh, I will present today I think five parts and the first one is just an introduction into the perception. Okay, um, let me just change the slide. Okay, so after the introduction, and each of these points will be a separate video. We will talk about psychophysics, gestalt theory, depth perception, and object recognition today. Okay, let's start with an introduction into the concept of perception in the context of cognitive psychology. I would like to start with showing you a video clip from the movie The Matrix, and where uh, the main actor is asked the question, what is actually real and what is not? And so let's just have a look at this and then think about what we have seen. <clears throat> okay. You wanted to know what the Matrix is, Neo? Trinity? Try to relax. This is the construct. It's our loading program. We can load anything from clothing to equipment, weapons, training simulations, anything we need. Right now, we're inside a computer program? Is it really so hard to believe? Your clothes are different, the plugs in your arms and head are gone? Your hair has changed. Your appearance now is what we call residual self-image. It is the mental projection of your digital self. This... This isn't real. What is real? How do you define real? If you're talking about what you can feel, what you can smell, what you can taste and see, then real is simply electrical signals interpreted by your brain. This is the world that you know. The world as it was at the end of the 20th century. It exists now only as part of a neural interactive simulation that we call the Matrix. You've been living in a dream world, Neo. This is the world as it exists today. Okay, so after having watched this video clip, I would like you to ask the question and think about this for a second yourself. Do you think something like the Matrix is in principle possible? Leaving aside just um, whether it's technically possible or not, but whether it's in principle possible. Think about this for a second and, and try, try to answer that to yourself and, and justify and give a reason for this. Okay, so I would say that yes, in principle it is possible because as we will see today, perception is really just the interpretation of our sensory input. And if it is somehow possible to mimic ne neural activities in our brain which represent our sensations, I don't think that humans are capable of 
seeing the difference that there is something real outside or whether it's just simulated as if we would feel that. Whether it's technically possible, that's a completely different story and I would doubt that. But in principle, it should be possible. Okay, so what's a good definition of perception? And perception can be defined as the process by which the cognitive system constructs an internal representation of the outside world. Okay, so let's work with that a little bit and let's sink it in. <clears throat> so key issues in perception is that perception actually is not an accurate representation of the reality. Instead, it's an interpretation of the sensory input which we are getting. So the senses may actually deceive us and we know that from several illusions which we have. Or different people may interpret different inputs in different ways. Okay, so just to give you an example how the same input may be interpreted in different ways, this usually works better in, in an in-person lecture, but most people can see and swap around and if I tell you that this is a duck with a beak and the eye and this is the back of the head, you may see the duck, or I can tell you it's a hare, a rabbit, with this like the tiny little nose and the eyes and the ears in the back. And if you don't tell people beforehand, some see uh, the duck, some see the hare. Another example is the uh, by now really well-known dress. And some people see this dress as blue and black, and others as white and gold. I think in tr reality it's blue. So in the lecture it's usually good fun because people say, how can you see it that way? When I see it that way, if you sit at home, you will just see it one way, and then it's it's that way. Another example are the legs, and here some people see an either oily legs which with these white reflections, or legs where just there's paint on them. Personally, I see the oily legs, but it's actually non-oily legs which just have white paint on them, which look like reflections. <clears throat> so these are examples of how perception is about interpretation of the sensory input and not about true reality. So it's really this construction, constructing an internal representation of the outside world. Construct means it's an active process and we will see examples of that in a moment and it's not like a phot photography or something like that. And representation is that it actually may be different to reality. And again, we will see a bit of examples, and we already have seen some before. So when the dress just has one color, and some people see a different color, because they represent it differently by their active process of uh, creating this representation. So it's a little bit like an artist painting. The artist sees the reality and interprets that in their way when putting onto the painting. So the painting usually is a good reflection um, of the outside world, but it's not a totally exact, physically accurate representation. Okay, so um, how do we get to this perception? And the main part of that you will hear in biological psychology. So uh, just a very, very quick recap from that. And let's take vision as an example. There we have this neurobiological um, chain, let's say, where we have the physical stimulus, the light, which meets the eye, the organ. And in the eye we have the retina, which contains the rods and cones, which are the receptors. So there are specific cells which can convert the physical stimulus, the light, light waves or light particles, into neural activity. And the same happens then for other things as well. We have specific cells which can uh, convert pressure or temperature into neural activity, or uh, like in the auditory domain, we have the movement of the membrane in the cochlea, and this movement is converted into elect 
electric activity. Now this neural activity then is passed onto um, the primary cortices, like the primary visual cortex, and there the processing is organized in a hierarchical way. So the primary visual cortex just detects very basic features in vision, like just lines and edges, but not more. But then it's processed further and further uh, until it goes to higher visual areas, which then detect and process such complex features like face regions or place regions or things like that. We have a, we have a visual word form area which detect words and things like that by the training. So it becomes more abstract and more complex. And this way of processing from the very basic up to more complex, it's called bottom-up processing. So it's externally driven and just the input is processed and gives rise to a certain perception which we have here. In particular at the higher level there's a lot of like interpretation going on where we try to map this raw input into existing content, concepts and things. However, it has also been shown that high-level, let's say, knowledge or previous knowledge influences our perception. And with the hare and the duck, the rabbit and the duck, we already see. So, okay, we know one how one or the other looks and that can influence how we see that. Another example is this one. Most people will immediately read the cat. However, if you look closely, you will see that this central letter has the identical physical shape. But nevertheless, in the, here we interpret it as an H and here as an A. And the reason why we do that is our prior knowledge about words. And we know that in this word it only makes sense to interpret it as an H and here it only makes sense to interpret it as an H. Uh, sorry, as an A. So our prior knowledge shapes our perception and influences it. So such influences must be considered in our product design. So this is just a funny example, but suppose most people would actually interpret this sign as a person struggling with an umbrella. Then we have to recreate that. And it doesn't help if you think that's a perfectly nice interpretation of a man shoveling away some, some gravel or so, if a considerable proportion of the population has a different interpretation of that percept. So if you ever come into the uh, situation that you have to design icons or products, you have to think more widely that your interpretation of visual input is not identical to the one of other people. Okay, so these influences of our expectations, prior knowledge, and so forth, um, is called top-down modulation. And what happens neurobiologically is that higher level brain areas, like the prefrontal cortex, for instance, influence ne the neural processing in lower level perceptual areas, like in occipital and some parietal areas. So that when we have a percept and we have two options of how to interpret something and we sway either into one or the other direction, then this prior knowledge can tip it over so that we take one interpretation and not the other. And in certain um, ways we can switch between the two actively. So our perception is influenced, what we actually see and perceive, by both. It's by bottom-up processing and by top-down modulation. And this can also be like in waves or in an iterative way. We have some initial bottom-up, some then top-down modulation. On top of that, we may get new bottom-up information, then the top-down modulation changes and, and things like that. Okay, so for the first part, let's come to an end and summarize that. We have seen that perception is the process by which the cognitive system constructs an internal representation of the outside world. That's really a very catchy and, and definition of perception which yeah captures the key components. We've seen that perception is based on bottom-up information processing and influenced by top-down processes. 
That means previous knowledge is used, for instance, to disambiguate the perceptual input, and which helps us to interpret it. Okay, if you have any questions, then please post that in your respective PY2701 or PY5701 uh, modules at uh, BBL shells and the discussion forums, or uh, write it down and take it to the seminar session and, and ask it over there. Okay, thanks for watching and listening to this first part, and when you do home learning and everything, maybe it's time for a good stretch, maybe take a sip of coffee or a water, walk around once before you continue with the next bit to get a little bit of break. Okay, hopefully see you soon. Bye-bye.